I'd like to call the regular meeting of the City of Bellflower City Council to order Monday, June 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Santinez. Here. Council Member Hamada. Here. Council Member Coops. Here. Council Member Sanchez. Here. Mayor Dutton. Here. All right, we're gonna uh, have the invocation led by myself and the Pledge of Allegiance by uh, Jim DeLonga, Director of Economic. Please bow your heads. Oh Lord, thank you for what you do and bless us here and the decisions we make here tonight. Let the city of Bellflower endeavor and grow and get along as a community should. Take care of our armed forces, our special uh, first responders, and uh, the needy and helpless. In the Lord's name, amen. Amen. Please address the flag. Put your right hand over your heart and say the pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The new Bellflower Farmer's Market soft opening in the Town Center Plaza last Monday, June 6, and will be hosting a grand opening event next Monday on June 20th at 3 p.m. The grand opening event is open to the public. The Farmer's Market was relocated to the Town Center Plaza on June 6 and will now operate there every Monday from 3 to 7 p.m. For more information, please contact 562-804-1424 at extension 2013. Mayor Pro Tem, Sonny Santanais. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. The Parks and Recreation Department has released the eight-week lineup of summer events. The first Friday Night Flex event will be this Friday, June 17th, at the, at the Town Center Plaza at 6.30 p.m. The Summer Street Fest will be next Thursday, June 23rd in downtown Bellflower on Bellflower Boulevard between Flower Street and Main Street at 6.30 p.m. For more information on additional summer special events, visit the city's website at www.bellflower.org or the city's Parks and Recreation Summer 2022 brochure. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Dan Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Southeast Los Angeles County Workforce Development Board is hosting a regional job fair at the Arte Artesia Park Community Center. That's located at 18750 Clarkdale Avenue in the city of Artesia next month on July 27th. It'll be from 9 until 1 p.m. If you have any questions or information is available at 562 Four eight four five zero one two. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Coops. Councilmember Raymond Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Bellflower. Look, Bellflower encourages all property owners to take a more active role in ensuring that family members and guests on the property refrain from using illegal fireworks this Fourth of July. Last year, the city implemented a more look at aggressive policy to stop the discharging of, of illegal fireworks. The enforcement strategy look, permits Bellflower Sheriff look, and public safety personnel to respond to a complaint at a residential property, film the discharging of, look, of illegal fireworks, and if the person or persons lighting them cannot be identified, the property owner will receive a $2,000 administrative citation in the mail. If you have any questions or concerns about firework enforcement in Bellflower, please call the Bellflower Sheriff's Substation at 562-925-0124. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you, Mr. Hamada. Council Member Victor Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Bellflower. The Bellflower Chamber of Commerce is hosting a business and community networking event on Thursday, June 23rd from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. at the Iron Fire Workspace located at 17434 Bellflower Boulevard, Suite 200. The Chamber also invites businesses, service clubs, and the community to join their monthly morning mingle, which will take place Tuesday, June 28th at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the Chamber office located at 16730 Bellflower Boulevard. For more information regarding the Bellflower Chamber of Commerce events, please call 562-867-1744. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Sanchez. Okay, at this time, I'd, we're gonna do a couple of uh, presentations. Um, this time I'd like to invite Karen Berger uh, to the presentation riser. Karen is the mother of our, of our city attorney, Carl Berger, and a similar to her son and has been involved in civic affairs and local government for quite some time. She has worked at a number of professions, some of which include land use and planning and significant involvement in the North San Diego planning group called San Diegan Citizens Planning Group. Karen has been dedicated residents of Sonola Beach, California since 72 and has made significant contributions to her community. Karen is an inspiration to us all and truly a great example of what a citizen involvement and public server looks like on, at a local level. And we can do the rest up here. I don't want to stand there too long. <laughs> My colleague can do, do over here in the riser. <laughs> the Bellflower City Council would like to wish Karen a happy 80th birthday, which she will be celebrating next Monday on June 20th, just around the corner. Uh, thank you, Karen, and for your dedicated service to your community, and thank you for allowing your son to be our city attorney. And with that, we have a proclamation here recognizing uh, your happy uh, 80th birthday from the city of Bellflower. Um, I know you were, during the lockdown moments of our pandemic, you were uh, there on Zoom every night while we were here. <laughs> we would always see you there, and we enjoyed seeing you there. And uh, it helped us keep the uh, city attorney in line, really. <laughs> and you all in person. There you go, yeah, <laughs> without, uh, <laughs> without on uh, Zoom. And uh, it's from all of us, uh, myself, the mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Sonny Santa Inez, Raymond Hamada, and Dan Coops, and of course, uh, Victor Sanchez. And with that, I'd like to give this to you for a little, so have some photos. Okay. Is there anything you would like to say? Would like to say? Very briefly. Well, okay. I pretty much, I pretty much said it all. I was fun watching you all on television those couple of years. I was impressed always with the care that you take of your community and the attention and appreciation for that I have. Also, it was fun, of course, to watch my son working. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> Did he do a lot of chores as when he uh, lived at home a long time ago? Did he, he always had to... Uh, do all the yard work, I'm sure, mm -hmm. rake the leaves. Uh. <laughs> anyway, thank you. For, uh, and Karen uh, drove up from San Diego today to do this. And uh, what a special mother that Carl has. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the 
I'm going to give you this one for free. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody was here. We see. I see. Let's see up here. Okay, let me get one more. We have another another uh, presentation from the for the American Red Cross hometown hero. So next, I would like to invite Richard Montiago. Mont Mont Montiago. Hano. Hano. Oh, the J. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. Hey, nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah. Richard is a Bellflower resident that was recently recognized at the May 19th Hometown Heroes Luncheon hosted by the American Red Cross. This uh, event celebrates extraordinary acts of heroism. On September 8th, 2021, a woman was driving her vehicle and unfortunately slammed into a propane tank in, at the filling station a filling station propane tank at a gas station. As the propane tank exploded into a fire, she found herself trapped in her vehicle. Active fire prevented her from exiting the driver's door. Passenger door was stuck on it uh, and it wouldn't open. Seeing the situation unfold, Richard and other bystanders leaped into action. The fire continued to grow intensively as the heat and smoke entered the vehicle. The rescuers were able to find a metal object to break the window, release the door lock, and open the door and pull the women out of the vehicle to safety. It was very clear that all involved, that if not with, for the quick, heroic actions of Richard and uh, the rescuers, the woman's situation could have been deadly. The Bellflower City Council would like to recognize Richard for his selfless act of hero heroism. We honor your courageous actions and wish you well. And with that, we have a certificate of uh, recognition for what you did. And uh, not every day you hear a story like that. It's kind of touching. And uh, with that, uh, would you like to say anything? Uh, no, just uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. How about, some, how about some pictures then? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, we're good. Great. Okay, item 10 on the agenda is public comments. Mr. Stewart, would you please? Yeah, this is the time set aside for the public to address the City Council on matters not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the City Council should come to the podium, be recognized by the Mayor, and state your name for the record. If you wish to address the City Council on an agenda item, you may do so by approaching the podium as we review that particular item. You'll be given three minutes to address the City Council. So anybody wishing to speak, now is the time to come to the podium and state your name and there's a sign up sheet on the podium to sign in mayor gentlemen ladies unfortunately I only have three minutes where you've had two years <laughs> but I've got a couple items here I would like to see this city council put together a deal to get rid of this districting thing that my good friend Johnny Dreher instituted a few years back and then left town. <laughs> I would also like to see this city council look into doing term limits because new people come with new ideas. We don't need somebody sitting up there for 10, 15, 20 years. You see what's happened with our illustrious government. 
The other item is when it comes to rental properties and sale of land, we need to look harder at what we're doing because we have insufficient parking to accommodate these items. It's been a joke for years, and now look at all the additional uh, condominiums and apartments being built, which are gonna clutter the streets up worse yet. So I'd like to see that looked at. And then basically there's a couple items on this thing I'm gonna talk on later on as they come up. But uh, the homeless is running rampant. We're getting them from out of town. I don't see the Sheriff's Department doing much of anything about it. I, if it was me, I'd be looking for a new sheriff. I don't mind saying a few things. But uh, there's a couple other things that I'd like to bring up, but uh, seeing as I've only got this you short got amount of time, yeah. you're not up through it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a uh, trailer park across the street from where I'm at and also where Mr. Coops is moving into all of a sudden, his little Taj Mahal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to see someone take it over as quickly as possible because the MTA wants to wash their hands of it, <coughs> and that's a disaster. There's homeless living in those vehicles. There's vehicles in there parked that shouldn't be. Uh, there's beer and liquor sold in that rec room. Nobody takes it, pays attention. And I'd like to see the code enforcement at least working five days a week instead of four every other Friday off because you're losing money left and right with permits that aren't pulled. You know it, I know it, and we all know it. So I'd like to see some adjustments. And like I say, I got a few other items I'm gonna speak on that I see on this thing that I'd like, like to see you look into. Thank you. Thank you, John. One, la one last item. I don't know what's happened with uh, I had a, a guy look up Northgate Markets to see about looking at a piece of property here in town, and I was just wondering if anything's come out of it yet, or do I have to speak with people at Northgate again to push this further? He, um, I got to reach out from uh, the president or the individual for the real estate division on right. LinkedIn, and he was supposed to reach out later on, and he hasn't done that yet. Because they want... They don't like rentals. They yeah. want to own the property. Yeah, I did. I did get an initial reach out about three weeks ago, but nothing since. All right, because whatever I can do on helping you, you know, damn well I will, because I know okay. people at Northgate. Okay. Thank you, John. Anybody else wish to do come and talk about anything that's not on the agenda? Okay. Not seeing anyone. Uh, item eleven A, Mr. Stewart. Yeah, this is consideration. Oh, oh. Uh, um, excuse me. Um, okay, is there any recusals on? Yeah, I have a conflict of interest. <coughs> Introduce it. Uh, be, I was going to get the topic in for. Okay, Mr. Stewart. We'll yeah, this is first. consideration possible action to conduct a public hearing to receive comments on the fiscal year 2022-2023 annual action annual action plan and adopt resolution number 22-28, resolution approving the fiscal year 2022-2023 annual action plan and amended, amended citizen participation plan authorizing the city manager to submit the AAP to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, and authorizing the city manager to take all actions necessary to implement the programs identified in this plan. Sorry, okay. and Ms. Pineda will make the staff report for us. Okay, before that, is yeah. there any recusals? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Well, can I have a conflict of interest? Um, uh, one of the recipients of, of some of the funding uh, is Kingdom Causes. I'm a member of their board of directors, so I will be recusing myself from this item. Okay, let the record reflect that Raymond Hamada is going to be recusing himself from item 11A. And I guess nobody else. Okay. okay. Ready? Ready for the staff report, yes. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. As required by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, the City is conducting a public hearing for the fiscal year 2022-2023 annual action plan. 
The annual action plan is a one-year plan which outlines the city's use of its Community Development Block Grant Funds, also known as CDBG, and Home Investment Partnership Program Funds, also known as HOME. The action plan describes the anticipated goals and activities for the upcoming program year. On April 4th, 2022, HUD notified the City of Bellflower that a waiver had been issued advising cities not to submit annual action plans to HUD until CDBG funding allocations for fiscal year 22-23 were received. As a result, the annual action plan must now be submitted to HUD by July 11th to apply for and receive funds for the fiscal year 22-23. So every five years, the city must submit a consolidated plan to HUD, which is a five-year plan for the use of CDBG and home funds. The consolidated plan is carried out through annual action plans. This year's annual action plan is the third action plan of the five-year consolidated planning period. CDBG funds must be used for activities that benefit low-income residents or for promoting economic development and eliminating blight. The CDBG program can fund activities such as community and public facilities, infrastructure improvements, economic development, public services, and business assistance. No more than 20% of the allocation can be spent on administration and no more than 15% can be spent on public service activities. So on May 13, 2022, HUD announced the city, the city of Bellflower, that the City of Bellflower will be receiving $861,437 in Community Development Block Grant funds, which is $82,175 less than what was estimated on the draft annual action plan. In addition to the fiscal year 22-23 entitlement grant, the city expects to receive $5,500 in program income and anticipates approximately 304,000 in carryover funds, with the total estimated funding at $1.17 million. This slide lists the proposed CDBG budget and activities for fiscal year 22-23. CDBG funds can be used to support public service agencies that provide vital services in the community. Staff received and approved three applications from the Fair Housing Foundation, Kingdom Causes, Bellflower Good Soils Program, and the Bellflower Volunteer Center. First, staff recommends funding the Fair Housing Foundation at $18,000. They provide fair housing services to residents to prevent discrimination. Their services include, but are not limited to, the referral, to referrals, investigations, case management, litigation, and resolving landlord, tenant, disputes. As a CDBG grantee, the city has a responsibility to affirmatively further fair housing. Therefore, HUD requires some sort of fair housing service. The Fair Housing Foundation's services satisfy this requirement. Next, staff recommends funding Kingdom Causes Bellflowers Good Soils program at $25,000. Kingdom Causes offers employment opportunities through their Good Soils Industries program. The program assists in hiring residents that are underemployed or unemployed. They also provide the on-the-job training, certification programs, and job acquisition skills for those who may have a criminal record or at, ri or at risk of being homeless. Kingdom Causes requested $40,000 in their application. However, due to the lower amount of funds received from HUD and the 15% public services cap, staff is recommending funding them at $25,000 which is the same amount that they were funded in the previous fiscal year. Next, the city has budgeted $104,215 of CDBG for Volunteer Center. The Volunteer Center recruits, trains, supervises, and recognizes individuals who volunteer their time to serve the low and moderate income residents of Bellflower. The Volunteer Center is also a part of the 15% public service cap and is primarily funded with CDBG. All three public service agencies participated in the program in prior years and met their goals without any issues. Next, CDBG partly funds code enforcement activities that address blight in CDBG eligible areas. The city has budgeted approximately $201,000 to continue these activities. 
Next, the city continues to also budget its debt service payments for its Section 108 loan that was used for several capital improvements in the town center area. This next fiscal year, that payment is about $518,000. This was a 20-year, $7 million loan taken out in, tw in 2004. So the loan will be paid off at the end of this five-year consolidated planning period, which is August of 2024. As previously mentioned, up to 20% of CDBG funds can be used for administration of the program. Staff has budgeted about $154,000 for staff and, con and consultant costs in fiscal year 22-23. Lastly, there is approximately $150,000 being carried over from the prior year's new small business startup loan program, which was unable to, complete, to be completed due to a delay in businesses opening. This program would be targeted towards the small businesses at the Orchard at Valfleur Center, and the program guidelines for this program were approved last year by Council at the April 26, 2021 Council meeting. Next are home funds. Home funds are meant to retain and increase the affordable housing stock for renters and owners in the city and must serve low-income households. Eligible uses of these funds include homeowner rehabilitation, the development of affordable housing, property acquisition for the development of affordable housing, and home buyer activities. A maximum of 10% of the home allocation can be used for program administration, and at least 15% of the allocation must be set aside for a community housing development organization, also known as a CHOTO, for an affordable housing project. In fiscal year 22-23, the city will be receiving $390,077 in home funds. This amount is $30,550 more than what was estimated in the draft annual action plan. The city anticipates approximately $1.7 million in carryover. Program income varies annually based on loan principal, interest, and equity sharing payments returned to the city during the fiscal year. Staff is using a nominal amount of $1,000. The program income that the city receives is reinvested back into the home program. The total estimated home funding is about $2.1 million. The next slide has the proposed home budget for the next fiscal year. Staff has budgeted $350,000 for the home improvement program. The home improvement program provides loans and grants to qualified low-income homeowners who wish to make qualifying improvements to their home or repair health and safety issues. Next, approximately $1.7 million is set aside for one or more CHOTO projects. This amount includes unexpended CHOTO and home improvement program amounts from last fiscal year. A CHOTO must be a nonprofit agency that will develop, own, or sponsor an affordable housing project Staff is looking at using these funds for a potential permanent supportive housing project. And lastly, staff has budgeted about $39,000 for staff and consultant costs. So on March 25th, a notice of a 30-day public comment period and this public hearing was published in the WAVE newspaper. And the draft action plan was made available for public review and comments from March 25th through today, June 13th. As, previous, as previously mentioned, this public hearing was continued from April 25th. In addition to the annual action plan, staff is providing for city council consideration to update the citizen participation plan. Staff is recommending the following change. Currently, the plan requires city council approval of activity funding changes of less than 50% to an existing activity. The amended plan will allow the city manager to approve activity funding changes of less than 50% documented by the economic development director via memorandum in the project file. With that, our recommendation tonight is to open the public hearing, take testimonial and documentary evidence and after considering the evidence, adopt resolution number 2228 and approve the amended citizen participation plan. 
or alternatively discuss and take other action related to this item. That completes the presentation. Staff is available for any questions. Thank you, as usual, a thorough PowerPoint presentation and, <laughs> and update. Anyway, is there any questions to the staff? Not seeing any uh, yet? Oh. Sanchez, go thank ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a quick question for staff. First of all, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, very informative. Um, I want to take a step back, go into the uh, CDBG programming and funding, uh, the list that you have um, of your recommendations. And starting off with the um, fair housing services, do you, we have any idea what um, level of clients or how many clients are serving on an annual basis? Do we have any of that data provided to us? Um, and that would go for all of the um, outside agencies that were funding this evening. I'd like to have that answered. Okay, so um, fair housing, they, I just got a call from them last week and they, um, Last fiscal year, they assisted 140 residents from Bellflower. And for this fiscal year through May, they have assisted 194 Bellflower residents. Okay. Um, let's see. Kingdom Causes has assisted 48 participants, and their goal was 40. Okay. So they've exceeded their plan. And uh, I'd have to look into the Volunteer Center because I didn't, I, I don't have that answer. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then I, I, I think I, for the most part, agree with the recommendations. And I guess I have a question, and this question might be for Mr. Mayor, if I may. This question might be for yes, go ahead. either Jim or for Jeff, and I'll let either one of you jump in. Uh, it sounds like they asked for 40000 40, One of the things I like about this program is that it's, it's not necessarily a uh, – it's a way of getting people back into the careers, giving them opportunity to get back on their feet, and instead of ending up on um, – our sidewalks and so forth. I'd like to find a way to get closer to that 40, whether it's if we can find 10,000 or 15,000 from somewhere else. And I'm thinking if it can't be through these funds, maybe it comes through the savings that we had when we uh, amended the contract with um, CityNet. Just a thought out there. If my colleagues would entertain that, I would, I would throw that out there. Well, we are at the maximum for our uh, cap in, with CDBG funds, and so the only way to be able to fund them additionally through CDBG is to reduce the volunteer center amount. And so we would have to look at other funding sources to provide additional funding to them outside of the CDBG funding. Or it could be general fund as well, if okay. you want to. It's a policy call to council. When we, when we say, because CityNet and Kingdom Causes are doing two of the sim you know, similar things and actions for us in our city. Was that through the general fund when we were paying CityNet? CityNet is. CityNet is. Do we, and I, I don't know if I can ask this question, it might be off topic, but are we still contracting with CityNet? Yes, we are. We reduced that contract. Though. We just reduced yeah. it. Okay, that's my understanding. Okay. Well, I'll throw it out there, and if um, my colleagues want to find a way to entertain that, then I would appreciate that. If not, it's okay with me. Do, um, one more question. Is the applicant here to provide any additional information? Kingdom Causes? Yes. Yes, they're here. They're here? Yes. Okay. Do you mind if, can we, could Mr. Mayor, maybe? Well, we should open the public open hearing. Open the public hearing. Oh, Got okay. it. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. I'm jumping the gun. Okay. <laughs> any other any other questions for? No, yeah. Mr. Mayor. I, that was it. That concludes my questions for now. Anyone else? Yes. yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Carla, for the presentation. It's very informative. And, uh, uh, I'm really grateful that we have this funding. Uh, it goes to a lot of uses within the city, like code enforcement, uh, business loans, and things like that. So it, it is really needed by the city. So I'm glad that we, we continue to get this funding. Um, question on the startup business loan. I know that um, we talked about this. Um, so the, the, the budget amount is $150,000, so up to five or up to three, how many? Council Member uh, Centine, as uh, this is this funding or this uh, program was split between regular CDBG funds and CDBG COVID funds. Okay. And in the process of working through all the uh, HUD issues and rules and regs, we found that we could not commingle the two funding sources together to form one loan. So we had to figure out how to split those. And so we're funding 
two of the loans through, uh, through the CDBG CV funds and three of the loans through the regular CDBG monies. And so this is only going to fund three of those loans oh, and the CV funds will fund two of those loans. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, very good. And my next question is on the, um, the home funds. Um, I see that there's a significant carryover from last year, 1.774 million in carryover funds. So what's the time limit to use this fund? Because it's a significant chunk. Uh, because if you look at your proposed um, investment, so to speak, uh, $350,000 for home improvement fund, and then Chodo is $1.7 million. So how much time do we have to, I don't want to use the word spend, invest this money? So um, for the Chodo, we do need to use the funds. Um, I believe it's about $79,000 by September of 2025. Okay. And um, for just CDBG and home funds, there is no limit. We can so carry it can it be over. carry over from year to year? For now, yes. Wow, okay. Well, that's good, because it takes a long time to develop housing. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a real long time. All right, time. that's good, very good. All right, that's all I have. Thank you so much. All right, I don't have anything, Mr. Coops, you have? Uh, one question. Uh, City net, or yes, we cut that in half, didn't we? Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing if anybody wishes. So Move. moved. Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Mayor Pro Tem Sunny Santinez and a second by Council Member Coos. Without objection, that'll be the order. Anybody wishing to uh, have any public comments on? This item 11A is now is the time to come to the podium. I think Mr. Sanchez wanted to hear from Kingdom of Causes at one of them. <laughs> if I recall, yes. Good evening. Um, Good evening. My name is Mike Gilman. I'm the director of Good Soils Industries. Um, I'm pretty new to this. I, I joined the team in, in uh, I think it was March. And it's pretty impressive what we are doing over here. Um, you know, our motto, our motto is, you know, you can give a guy a fish and feed him for a day, or you can teach him how to fish and feed him for a lifetime. And that's what's happening is we have alumni that went through this program 10 years ago, eight years ago, that since have been sustained in housing job they're back in they're back into to society and uh this program i see i get to see it every day i'm i'm so lucky that these people are getting their confidence back they're getting they feel like they they feel like they're actually people that belong in bellflower now they um you know after a long day their their biggest thing right now i have six guys that don't know they're going to sleep at night you know, and they they talk about you know where are we going to sleep? We're safe. Do you know of, you know of a safe place tonight? I know after a long day working in the yards in 90 degree heat, first thing I want is a shower and take a nap. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. and they don't get that opportunity. They as soon as they get off work, they're struggling to find something to eat, and then they got to find somewhere safe to 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 sleep for the night so they can get up at five o'clock and come and do it all over again. But they do it because they have a pride. They're making their own money now. And this program is, uh, it's not only taking people off the street, but it's keeping them off the street. And uh, any, any help we can get, we would really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gillen. Do you have any questions? So, uh, yes, just one question, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, and yeah, come on back up to the podium. Sorry about that. No, you're good. I think we recently had a presentation by your executive director, but can you kind of just provide a um, a number count of how many clients have or how many participants have gone through the program in the last fiscal year? The last fiscal year, we are right now at uh, 14 since in 2022. Um, out of that 14, I believe seven of them are about to graduate through the program, and we're going to find actively finding other employment for them. And we're about to hire another uh, nine people <coughs> in the next couple months. 
So we're gonna we're projecting to exceed our our goals. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Anyone uh, else wishing to uh, talk about item 11A? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Mayor Pro Tem Sonny Santinas and a second by Council Member Coops without objection. That'll be the order. Discussion, guys. I know uh, Victor Sanchez had, a, had an idea. Say your idea again, Victor, so I understand yeah. it better. Uh, of course, Council Member Coops. Um, so the idea was e either to make adjustments in the current projected. CDG <coughs> funds, okay. or I believe the uh, the uh, city manager recommended maybe going out of the general funds, um, and I was recommending that we would use funds that we saved from cutting the uh, city net contract in half to make up the difference of ten to fifteen thousand. Which I don't know what the numbers we saved were, but I'm thinking they were significant, way higher than ten to fifteen thousand. It was more than that. More like thirty. Fifty. Yeah, about fifty. <laughs> I think it was 120 for, for the a whole. year. Okay. It was 10,000 a month, as I remember. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. for the gist of it, my idea is to find a way to get them the additional 10 to 15,000 that they were asking. And which uh, program activity would you program that? Do you have a specific place you think would be best investment? It would be for a, a good soils industry for kingdom causes. I I don't know if we would again take it out of uh, volunteer center or code enforcement, or if we would again just if we do the other route, we leave this alone and we would just give a, from the general funds the difference. I don't know. If The, the discussion that was given by Mr. Gilman about what hit me the hardest was the fact that he has people that work for him all day and they have nowhere to go at night. I don't know what that would take in order to be able to have a good performing employer, employee to be able to be housed at night so they're ready to perform the next day. Otherwise, I think you're working against yourself. Right. What, are you, what are your thoughts? Right, I yeah. agree. That would be, but again, how, what do we program for that amount of money? Uh, because to house half a dozen people throughout the year could be a pretty significant amount. Oh, I see. I um, think this money is just to fund the program. Right, I think this money is more just, just funds to fund the program. The, the well, program is that itself. part of the program if you're going to house somebody that's doing the well, I work? I, if I had to think this kind of a deal is, is, is a business that doesn't show that much of a profit and he has more expenses, and that's just what this is offsetting the expenses to have this program work. That's my... Right. Okay. Is that and correct, then, Mr. Gilman? <laughs> and then my, okay. I think what they're doing is we're, we're, we're subsidizing yeah. their compensation. Right. Exactly. In a way. Right. Well we're, we're facilitating, yeah, we're facilitating yeah. the employment. Is what we would be doing. What we, we what we are doing when we do the twenty five thousand, um, and I think we've done twenty five thousand for several years in a row, right? Yeah. And so you were suggesting to make it forty, which is what they, what they were asking for. Right. Correct. Or get them close to forty. So either thirty five or you know. Can you can you hang on a second? Anna is checking right now to see if we have any funds from our drug education come fund left over from the cannabis businesses we might be able to use oh, to fund this. Perfect. And she's going to look real real quick. You don't care where it comes from. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a great place for it to come from. So we're good. As long as it's green. As long as it's green and it's doing the right thing. Yeah, we could do it that way. Okay. So if you do we have talk 15, about money going full circle, <laughs> <laughs> Anna, do we have fifteen thousand to do that? Yeah, we could just if you want to amend the motion and the council agrees, then we could pull it from that fund and, and supplement the difference. In the do we do that in a in a motion here? Yeah, you make the motion from the dais here. Okay. To supplement that fund from the drug education fund. Drug education yeah. fund. Right. I would uh, entertain a motion. 
whoever uh, whoever hands mo- makes a motion to stipulate the education. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Mayor, money. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion to adopt resolution number 22-28, a resolution approving the fiscal year 2022-2023 annual action plan, also known as the AAP, and the amended citizens participation plan, also known as CPP, authorizing the city manager to submit the AAP to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, and authorizing the city manager to take all actions necessary to implement the programs identified in AAP, with the amendment that Kingdom Causes receives its fully requested amount of 40,000 uh, with 15,000 coming out of the Drug Education Fund. I'll second the motion. Motion on the floor by Victor Sanchez and a second by Councilmember Coops. Uh, call roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem Santinas. Aye. Councilmember Coops. Aye. Councilmember Sanchez. Aye. Mayor Dutton. Aye. Item 11B, Mr. Stewart. Mr. This Amato. is uh, Mr. Oh, oh wait, before Mr. we do Mayor, that, let's go. Let's go get somebody. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, uh, Jeff, actually, he's recused, and so am I. Oh, I'm, oh, so we're conflicted out. So well, I'm going done, back. You have to come and re- he needs to say it on the. He has oh, to make the announcement it. in the on the tape. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell him we got 15,000. Not on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> not 11B. Oh, I'm a uh, 13 something. I'll announce it, then you can make your recusals. It's well, it's not this one we just heard. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I'll just announce it, and you guys can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, then we'll figure it out. Victor was trying to keep. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I, was, I, was trying, to I support that. To, <laughs> we're trying to keep it efficient. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is consideration possible action to conduct a public hearing to adopt resolution number 22-25, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement. File number 934 in a form approved by the city attorney with Polytechnic Environmental Inc. to loan to lend funds for building facade improvements at Polytechnic Environmental at 9833 Belmont Street per the Economic Development Business Assistance Plan Chapter 3. And I believe Eduardo will make the staff report for you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Go ahead. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. This public hearing item is to consider a loan application from Juhi Sood, owner of Polytechnique Environmental. Her application is for Chapter 3 of the Business Assistance Plan. As a quick background, the City's Business Assistance Plan in its current form was approved by the City Council on July 10, 2017. The plan provides matching loans to business, restaurant, and property owners for improvements to help attract and retain businesses in Bellflower. In particular, Chapter 3 of the plan provides assistance for commercial facade improvements. If the business is located within downtown Bellflower, it may be eligible for a loan from the city for facade upgrades. The loan will provide a match of two-thirds or 66% of eligible project costs up to a maximum of $20,000 and an additional $10,000 with a property owner's participation and match. An additional $3,000 in loan funds is available for architectural design and design assistance. Ms. Juhi Sood, the owner of Polytechnique Environmental Incorporated, has applied for Chapter 3 of the Business Assistance Plan. Staff reviewed all application materials and determined that the application meets the criteria for assistance under the plan. Her company provides environmental compliance, engineering, and sustainability services for public and private sector clients. Polytechnique plans to establish its first headquarters at the 9833 Belmont Street building in the space next door to Holland International Market, which is just down the street from City Hall. Ms. Sood is also manager of Resica LLC, which owns the 9833 Belmont Street property. Together, Polytechnique and Resica will be investing an estimated $250,000 for various interior and exterior improvements to the building. Around 8 to 14 employees will be working on site after improvements are completed. Of these planned upgrades, Polytechnique is applying for Chapter 3 business assistance to help pay for a fully renovated and modernized front facade. 
the owner is seeking assistance for the manufacture and installation of fixed panel and operable windows that will comprise the new facade, which will use energy efficient materials. All labor as part of this work will be subject to prevailing wage. In this slide, we have uh, a picture of the building as it was as it, in its current condition as it was this morning on the corner of Belmont Street and Addenmore Avenue. And in this next slide is an architectural rendering of the proposed exterior improvements, including uh, the improved windows. In this chart, we have a breakdown of the city's loan amounts, the matching contributions from both Polytechnique and Resica, and the total project cost for the scope of work, which is $68,599 to be exact. The total not to exceed loan amount, if approved by council, would be $33,000 with $30,000 with $30, for project costs and $3,000 for architectural design. Disbursement of the loan funds would be only through invoice reimbursement. The improvements must be completed within one year and Chapter 3 loans are provided at 0% <laughs> interest and are fully forgivable in five years. Additionally, I'd like to call your attention to a clause in Section 2.2 of the Sample Loan Agreement contained in your agenda packet. It's on page uh, 7 of 16 in the packet. And in particular, um, Section 2.2 specifies the following. If the applicant's matching funds offered were not used towards the scope of improvements that the loan was intended for, but rather towards other building improvements or upgrades, the economic development director may, at the director's sole discretion, accept these as the applicant's 34% match. Uh, we will work with the city attorney to amend that section, that particular sentence, and that's only to ensure that funds are spent on facade improvements. With that, staff recommends for the city council to open the public hearing, take testimonial and documentary evidence, and after considering the evidence, adopt resolution number 2225 or alternatively discuss and take any another action related to this, this item. That completes my presentation and staff is available for any questions. Ms. Juhi Su, the owner of Polytechnique Environmental is also present here and is happy to answer any questions as well about the project. Thank you. Thank you, any questions of staff at the moment? Mr. Romano, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, a, a quickly, thank you for the report, Eduardo. Uh, uh, is this the first time we've gone to the max on this type of loan, or have there been other others in the past? No, I don't believe so. We've used Chapter 3 of the Business Assistance Loan for other projects, for example, for the construction of the Nestambiens facade, and also for, I believe, also for Victory, uh, mm -hmm. Medical, I believe we've used uh, the same chapter three. Okay. Did you ask for? The, is the first time I went to the max? On the, the, well, yeah, yeah. The, yeah I, I, I know we've done those projects, but right. have we gone to Did the max? Did we go to the max on those projects? Is the question on those others? Actually, you know, to to correct myself, I'm not sure if we use the max for victory, but we did definitely use the max for the Nest oh, All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Anyone else? Nope. I entertain a motion then. Anybody wants to move to uh, open the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, a motion on the floor by Councilmember Coops and second by Hamada. Anybody wishing to speak on this item or chime in? Welcome to come to the podium. Everybody looks comfortable. Move to close the public <laughs> hearing, Mr. Mayor. Second. Second. <laughs> Without objection, that'll be the order. <laughs> What's your pleasure, guys? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion uh, for the City Council of Bellflower to adopt Resolution 22-25, a resolution authorizing the City Manager to execute loan agreement file number 934 in the form approved the City Attorney with Polytechnic Environmental Inc. to provide loan funds for building facade improvements at Polytechnic Environmental uh, 9833 Belmont Street for the Economic Development Business Assistance Plan, Chapter 3. Second. Second. Oh. <laughs> hmm. 
right. <laughs> well, <Does clean. laughs> I think Thank it was God. Victor's turn. <laughs> okay, Sonny on the motion and, <laughs> and Victor on the second. I'll roll when you're ready, please. Mayor Pro Tem Santinez. Aye. Councilmember Hamada. Aye. Councilmember Coops. Aye. Councilmember Sanchez. Aye. Mayor Dutton. Aye. Item 12B, Mr. Stewart. Oh, I mean, 12A. 12A. Item 12A, Mr. 12A, Stewart. So, <laughs> this consideration possible, I should read by title only. We have further reading, introduce ordinance number 1414, ordinance amending section, subsection 2.16.010 oh. yeah, the Belfar Municipal Code to provide salary adjustment for members of the City Council following the next general municipal election. As Council is aware, this is something yeah. the Council does periodically. The State Code sets mm -hmm. the Council salary based on City population. Mm -hmm. It can be increased uh, prior to an election year at up to 5% a year. The City Council last took an increase in 2018. In 2020, they considered the item chose not to take an increase due to the issues of COVID, et cetera. As a result, you're in a position now where if you so choose, you could take an increase that would result in a 20% increase to the current Council salary. And at that full increase, it would be an additional $293.90 per month per City Council member. However, given the Council's always been wanted to consider this item without necessarily taking that recommendation. We left the options open for the council. And we've taken the liberty of going through four salary steps with 5, 10, 15, and 20% increases to council salary if the council chooses to take any salary increase. Totally a policy call at the council, um, but the, frame, the framework is there. Um, and like I said, the last time that the council has taken a raise is, is since 2018. So again, I think that uh, if there's any questions that come up through the hearing, we could answer it and answer any questions the council might have. All right, I asked for this to be on the agenda and uh, and have the, the percentages in the staff report and reason being, as you all know, um, it's been four years and we are usually giving out money and donations like a machine. <laughs> Either that or I'm the only one doing it, but I don't think so. <laughs> We're always donating to something, and that is why. Um, we don't want to get left behind. Uh, my gut feeling was somewhere in the middle. And that's my two cents, so what do you, do you guys feel comfortable with? Or Before you, all? I yeah. I've neglected to say that there is a brief uh, salary survey of the neighboring cities for council salaries, mm -hmm. and that's been put out for public uh, consumption if necessary. But you have it before you tonight at the council. I just wanted to announce that, so you're good to go on that. Okay. Anybody Mayor, have any thoughts? Yeah, when we did our last uh, evaluation of our employees in the city, altogether, what was our increase for them? You know, we had cost of living, we had health, we had different items in that. Does anyone have an idea what that the percentage was, was? That was eight months ago, I think. Yeah. Well, we increased the health, didn't we? The health went up. How much? Everything goes up. Yeah, health. Seventy. Yeah. The health. Well, so what Susan said, she's not the microphone. Is over the next two years, the counts or the staff salaries went up six and a half percent. And the health benefit was increased by $75 per month per employee. Um, and we received that already. Yes, it's been received. So the number at the top of my head, thinking of that number, it's close to 8% over two years. That's what the total would be. And to me, that I'm using that as kind of a benchmark so that we try to be fair with our employees before we try to be fair with ourselves is what happens. And so that's why we've kicked the can down the road for the last four years. Um, but like the mayor said, that most of the money that we receive, <coughs> we end up donating back to the community anyway. And uh, so I would be uh, in favor of the 5 or the 10% increase. I'm, I'm a little wary of the 15 or 20, but <laughs> I could support the 5 or the 10. But that's just what I'm throwing on the table if the rest of you want to consider it. Mayor, I just want to make a comment that... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, being in the city council, I mean, the the uh, the stipend is not for us to make a living. I mean, that's for sure. 
So, but at the same time, um, we we um, the the last increase was for guns you mentioned in 2000, 2020. Um, and considering that um, our employees got six and a half percent minimum for over two years, so uh, well, our last increase was eighteen, wasn't it? Two thousand eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Four, it was last four years. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we it was foregone. And this wouldn't take it. This wouldn't take an effect until until twenty twenty two. Right. After the next election, so. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm with Councilmember Coops. I can go with either five or ten. Mm -hmm. So. Mr. Mayor, I, I'm not going to repeat everyone's words here, but I, I concur. Five to ten. Yeah. Mr. Hamada? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Mr. How's Mayor. It doing? How's it going on down there? Oh, good. On good. the north uh, end. You're going to break the tie. Uh, <laughs> is it the tie? <laughs> um, let, me, uh, yeah, let me just, uh, again, reflect on, on you know, what's been done in the past. Uh, again, uh, you know, this was brought forward to us about a couple years ago, and, yes, we were in the height of COVID. And uh, it, it it was tough, and you know, to to see a personal raise versus what's happening out there, and uh, you know, I've been talking to a good number of people and I'm talking about situations and how things are going, and you know, and I st I still get the sense of uncertainties and um, uh, some of the insecurities, and and, and uh, um, yes, it's it's been better from two years ago, of course. I think uh, we're definitely on the move, and, and uh, but um, just in standpoint of economy and, and so on, it it it's still uh, in a situation where it's uh, uh, it, it's it's not the best for everybody. Uh, I, uh, some of the comments about uh, uh, again um, uh, money back to the community, of course. Yes, I, I'm a fan of the uh, nonprofits here in town. And um, and I and, and again, thank you for this survey. Uh, and we're we're in the ballpark, and I think we're better in the ballpark, so to speak. Just looking at uh, the uh, the other surveys, and so um, uh, if maybe where you're getting my sense right now is that uh, I recognize that uh, you know this is a lot of work up here. We 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 do a lot of work. And, and of course, and, and and there is a question of, of fairness and from a standpoint of uh, of um, the stipend, so to speak, uh, to uh, again help in covering any miscellaneous costs. Yeah, I bet we do a lot of driving, so a lot of miles, and, and we uh, uh, we because uh, we visit a lot of businesses, we talk to a lot of people, we come to meetings twice, you know, and and uh, we visit city hall and so on. So. Um, um, just personally, uh, I, I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm okay with holding right now, uh, just just based on the numbers there. So, but uh, I respect uh, you know again uh, because the opinions of, of of the others here, my my colleagues. But uh, for me, it um, um, I'm I'm going to still uh, you know support our our local community so uh so that again that's just my thoughts so um at this point i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of hold hold pat <laughs> so i'll just leave All it right there. we'll raise ours and leave yours yeah. the same yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, if that's it uh, uh, but that's i'm gonna have to make do this quick <laughs> just get it done <laughs> there's no need to go on forever i'll make a motion to uh, split the baby in half 10 percent second Any substitute motions? Got a motion on the floor, myself, and a second by Councilmember Coops. Call roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem Santinas? Aye. Councilmember Hamada? No. Councilmember Coops? Aye. Councilmember Sanchez? Aye. Mayor Dutton? Aye. Item, now item 12B. Wait, um, yeah. Mr. Actually, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, you still need to introduce and mm -hmm. wait first reading on the ordinance for 12A. So it was two oh. motions. One was to determine the oh. exact percentage, and the second is to actually introduce the ordinance. That would have been on me. Oh, sorry, Kate. 
I would like to uh, recommend, make a motion to, you know, okay, we, we established the matter. Okay, read by title only, waive further reading, and introduce ordinance 1414. Second. Got a motion on the floor by myself and a second by Councilmember Coops. Call roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem Santinas? Aye. Councilmember Hamada? No. Councilmember Coops? Aye. Councilmember Sanchez? Aye. Mayor Dutton? Aye. Okay, Mr. Attorney, can I go on now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Item 12B, Mr. Stewart. This is uh, adoption of an emergency ordinance amending Belfire Municipal Code Chapter 5.28 regulating street vending in accordance with Government Code Section 51306. Introduction and first reading of regular ordinance doing the same. And Mr. Berger will have the staff report for you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I have the staff report is brief. Most of this is laid out in the written materials. Uh, in some, though, as you recall, in 2019, the city council amended the municipal code in accordance with California law with regard to street vending. I think it was anticipated at that point that we would have some time to determine how those regulations took effect. As many of you know, there were some intervening events that happened between 2019 and, and this summer, uh, which is the reason for the recommended urgency ordinance to tweak the municipal code, as mentioned in the staff report, to add an impoundment regulation with regard to push cart vendors that are not properly permitted. The impounding regulations that are recommended are substantially similar to those in the Health and Safety Code with regard to failure to have a health permit. It would allow code enforcement officers to take the implements and the any perishables that were in those implements and hold them until the individual who was using them could provide either a valid permit or demonstrate that indeed they were somehow exempt from the permitting requirements of this municipal code. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions to our city attorney on this item? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Just a question for the city attorney. What, what's the process usually for that permitting? The process is fairly simple. The rest of the regulations in the municipal code that were introduced in, well, were added in 2019, uh, you have to show a valid ID, which is just government ID, a demonstration that you have a health per permit if you're actually selling perishables or, or edibles, uh, and otherwise it's it's a fairly straightforward permit. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you how much the cost is in terms of being able to recoup the cost for processing the permit. It's fairly low though. One of the things that the state legislature did in 2019 when the council last went through this was to decriminalize all of the regulations with regard to street cart vending. So, Along those lines, it also expedited the the issuing of these types of permits, um, but it's a fairly straightforward process: valid ID, valid street address, that type of thing. And with that said, um, they don't. There's no requirement for a city permit. That, is, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's what you're talking permit. about. So yeah. there is a city permit involved. Correct. A city license. Okay, yes. very good. You know, I I mean, naturally, I do sympathize um, with the with the businesses who are doing a similar type of product. For example, one of the calls that I usually get from our local restaurants who are taco, taco vendors, for example, is the, um, you know, they will be down the street, a, a vendor who just parks up and puts a stand up and everything else. And that hurts those natural, those businesses who have a lot of overhead and, and, um, and those are the kind of calls that I get naturally. I, I'm sure we, you know, I, I think we've seen emails come in on those regards as well. Um, and of course, I also sympathize for the people doing, you know, the food vending. Um, they're trying to make a living. I'd rather them doing that than other things. But um, so my, my next question, because um, I, I do support this. I do support enforcement, of course. Uh, when we go out to enforce, are we providing any kind of information as to how to get a pro uh, permit process going and where they can actually, if they were to get a permit, locate and things like that? Uh, to be honest, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, since I don't go out and issue the, the permits I and, you know, and, and the citations, I cannot tell you as a practical matter, but uh, if Mr. Ho or actually, no. Ms. Corpus is Corpus here. Is. Council Member Sanchez, code enforcement officers do. So part of the enforcement is to also educate okay. if they're unpermitted, and we do have a handout, both in English and Spanish, that we hand to them. Perfect. That, that was all. That was all I wanted to know. 
Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Your turn. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And uh, I, I really like this ordinance now because uh, I've been getting a lot of phone calls from street vendors, from pushcart vendors, and also a, a food truck that parks on Lakewood Boulevard and Oak Street. Mm -hmm. It's been one of my favorite. And um, just to echo what uh, Council Member Sanchez mentioned, uh, uh, it, it is unfair to our businesses who basically rent a space, go to all the permitting process, and yet there's a competition down the street that don't have the permit, that don't pay rent and things like that. So it's unfair, uh, unfair competition. At the same time, um, I also sympathize with the, the, um, the push cart vendors, the truck vendors, food truck vendors, but at the same time, there is a process to get a permit. And one of the things that I'm worried about is it's not only the, um, uh, the effect on our local businesses in Bellflower, also the public safety because you don't know what kind of food is being sold. So they need to get a health permit also. So it's also for the benefit of, of our residents to make sure that the vendors have both a city permit and a health permit at the same time. So it's, to me, it's a twofold situation. Uh, Mr. Berger, city attorney, um, I'm just kind of, um, as my call to you today, I was really shocked about this ordinance. It was, I was pleasantly shocked because when the, uh, when our favorite um, state legislature passed, a, passed a, uh, a law, basically, to decriminalize um, street vending, we were told that we cannot confiscate food carts. So how would, how would that be different from what we are proposing in this ordinance now? So Mr. Mayor, members of the council, as I mentioned, this is substantially similar to the impoundment process and the health and safety code for edibles and utensils <coughs> and other implements for when somebody doesn't have a health permit. So as you know, food vendors require two types of permits. One is a health permit to serve up the food, and the second is the street vending permit issued under the municipal code. Uh, to answer your question, there's nothing, no prohibition specifically about impoundment under state law. One of the issues that we'd, we'd relied upon, or one of the regulations we'd relied up upon when this was first introduced to the city council in 2019 was actually that health and safety code section which says that we can impound these items for at least a 24 hour basis until and give an individual an opportunity to come in and, and demonstrate that they have a valid permit or to appeal the decision to take the implements uh, and you'll see that in the draft ordinances there's a provision in there about how they can actually appeal the decision to to impound the the both the perishables and the implements uh, I, I suspect, since I wasn't there, that one of the pieces of information that was provided to you was based upon some case law that came down out of the city of Los Angeles, whereby there was no opportunity for a due process proceeding once those things were impounded in the city of Los Angeles. And what was happening was code enforcement for the city of Los Angeles was simply throwing everything out without giving the mm -hmm. owner an opportunity to come in and demonstrate that, A, they either had a valid permit or had obtained a valid permit in order to retrieve their property. So this, these particular regulations have that due process provision in it. And so what it is, really is, is that the city is, is taking this, these implements and the food products as evidentiary, for an evidentiary mm -hmm. proceeding in the event that we need to revoke a, a permit or to actually enforce the administrative citations that are being issued. So there is a due process element built into it. Uh, it's not, I think, the perception may have been from that, that LA case where code enforcement officers are going out and simply seizing things. There's a reason for that seizure and it's, it's mainly for evidence in an administrative hearing or because the same person has been uh, identified three or more times as not having a permit and has either refused to pay the administrative citation and or refused to obtain the permit. One would think that after at least one time and having to pay a $100 administrative citation on the first attempt that you would go in and get a valid permit rather than uh, simply ignoring what the regulations are. So that's what this is designed for. I, again, I wasn't there at, at that particular mm -hmm. meeting, but in reviewing the state law that specifically affects street vendors, there's no explicit prohibition on the city being able to adopt these types of, of regulations. There are some cities surrounding us I will say that this language was borrowed from the city of Santa Monica and made better, I would say. 
or the city of Bellflower. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, it, it is not unprecedented. I know that the city council sometimes shies away from being first. You would not be first. Okay, very good. And again, it's, um, it's a welcome addition, welcome ordinance, and I think uh, our residents would really welcome this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, um, is there such thing as an ultra urgency? Or no, no, just teasing, <laughs> just teasing. Um, um, uh, Carl, um, uh, as part of this ordinance, uh, I think some of the concerns I've seen in some of these pop-ups that just take over and is some of the leftover mess. So uh, is, there, is there something added about any cleanup costs that they may have left as a result of these illegal, so they get a site, maybe that includes second site for for uh, either littering or, or uh, 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 spilling oil on on public property because um, uh, that's that's popped up and I I can correct my colleagues again that this is this is needed uh, uh, there has been total disregard of public property and also private property too and, and so um, uh, just wondering about that maybe it, would that that's something that uh, is necessary to add or reference to because I know about the impounding and other things but so Mr. Mayor members of the council actually under the existing regulations there's right. already a requirement right. for properly permitted vendors to keep areas within I believe it's 15 to 20 feet I forget the exact number off the top of my head uh, within the area that they're using their push carts or their mobile food carriers they're supposed to keep that clear of trash and other debris and so it would actually be a permit violation, assuming that they had a valid permit, it would be a, a permit violation for them to leave uh, the area in that type of disrepair with litter surrounding it and what have you. So there are a couple of options that the city council, or rather the city would have under those circumstances. One is to issue the administrative citations, but also for those scoff laws that continue to violate those regulations would be actually to revoke a permit and go through the process for revoking a permit. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carl. You good, good. I've got a question. Go ahead. The, um, I'm all in favor of what we're trying to accomplish here, but I'm a little more uh, sensitive to the fact that when I, what I see of the vendors is that they come in usually on the back of a flatbed truck, four to six of them, and then dispersed. So they're actually working for a, an individual as an employee in the realm of food distribution. Could it be that, you know, what I'm picturing is, and correct me if I'm wrong, that when we approach someone, a city staff would say, hey, show me your license to be here. And if they cannot produce it, we're going to have a vehicle there standing ready to load up their contents and their and their vehicle and take it away and you're just standing on the curb and that's the end of it. Is that how it goes? Or what are the mechanics of this? Well, I provide you with esoteric right. legal <laughs> regulations. I'll have no, to but defer maybe to Ms. Public Corpus works up for, here, the, whoever for the practical would be actually doing that kind of, of it. activity. <laughs> It'd be whatever policy we set forth. All right. Because we're going to have to designate a place in, the, in our uh, public yard for those vehicles to be impounded until they're retrieved. And uh, maybe I'm an, a softie on this. I would like to be able to give them a warning before we take their item away and their, their vehicle or their cart or their contents. And I wondered whether or not that just gets very complicated. Everybody's always looking for that first warning and they're looking for the second yeah. warning or you just put the hammer down and say, we've got a trailer here, we're gonna load up your stuff, and uh, you can go home. So, so when, you live, <laughs> when you live behind a gate, it's different. 7.30 every night come, come down my street. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. It's not the ice cream machine truck. So you, but it's a pleasant sound. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and it seems as though I see more of them. We have a three-day <laughs> RDO. They seem to mm -hmm. be sensitive to how many people are regulating what it's goes on. It's the cowbell they go. They right. walk up and down the street with a cowbell. All right. Well, I under, so I, yeah, I do live in a gated community, <laughs> and uh, we don't have that kind of activity. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, yeah. But so I'm just throwing that out there that what are the mechanics of uh, do we get a trailer or something? That's, they all have wheels on them. How do we get them on the? How do we get rid of them? They fit in the back of a Ranger truck. Well, they might no, have a little weight to one. them, wouldn't they? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, do we so got to get a lift gate on a truck to able to accommodate this? You know, I'm just looking at the mechanics of it all. So, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if you'll note, in the or draft ordinances, there is a provision that authorizes the city manager to adopt administrative policies and, and procedures to implement these regulations. So that would go toward the mechanics and the actual procedures for going through things. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that is staff's. We set policy. Staff takes it from there. I understand. We're here but, policy uh, We're tonight. just going to a place we've never been before. We've done it before. We've done it for, for years. I we guarantee you did it during the 80s and 90s. When we oh, yeah. Well, I remember when we had, phases. remember the guy over at the yeah. DMV on Artesia Street? Right. And we said, you can do your activity until mm -hmm. you retire and it's not renewable. You remember right. that deal? Maybe I'm too old to remember that. And we had another guy that was oh, in front of Union Bank, and he had several of them says, you can stay till the end of the year, and then you leave? Remember? Right. So we it's have had... We gave him two years. He was going to school back then. So, right. so we have some, had some accommodations. The immediate answer to the question is we do have the capacity to pick them up and store them yeah. if they decide to pick the carts or just take the, the food spoils out of it or whatever we choose to do. We can make it work. i got to work with the sergeant and Joel Hawkman and get this worked out. But uh, we'll set up the procedures while we would do that. We'll hold them in the yard. We have the space for it. And, frankly, I suspect that... Once we start cracking down on this, we'll have less less issues of it in the future going forward. So I think we'll be okay. And then once we get it worked out, I'll forward the policies of the council so everybody has them. You know. So once word gets out that uh, we're not a tolerant of this, they will. Yeah, I would like to think come. so. I mean, it's it's we've all been through these cycles in this. I know in the '90s it was a huge problem uh, for cities these push carts, and we all cracked down on them, and they went away for a while, and then they came back, and it's just it's cyclical. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Berger, when you uh, said uh, impounding the implements, it would be either a push cart or a, a flat top, Everything propane operated flat top or something like that. It implements, is that what you mean? Yeah, actually, it, it could be a, a mobile truck. Mobile oh, truck, huh? Yeah, okay. it's a, it, the food. Could be anything, huh? We could in, okay. in, uh, pick up a, an entire hot truck. Is that what you're telling us? If, yeah. if it failed to have the vendor and it, vending permit, failed to have a health permit, any of those things that, that it's required to, to yeah. have. Ms. Corpus, can I have you come up? i got a question for you, Tal. Thank you, Mr. Berger. That's significant. You're probably the closest one that knows what the health department per permit is. Because I knew for a fact is, is when we have the street fest and we have food vendors on there, Mm -hmm. To get the health permit, you got to jump some hoops. You have to have a serving screen in front of you with certain dimensions to reach out and pass through. You have to have a place to wash your hands. Wash. You have to have a restroom. So would you think a, a push cart going up and down the residential streets would be able to get a health permit? Mayor Dunton, yeah. generally not. Yeah. Um, because one of the main things in the provisions of the code is, or the health code, uh -huh. is that you have to have a hand washing stations. Mm -hmm. um, most of them don't. Mm -hmm. um, also, to be able to serve food, a lot of it has to be prepackaged. So right. some of it may or may not be prepackaged, yeah. depending on the type of. If it's prepackaged, then it, you know it's gone. But yeah, it's, what I'm seeing is mm -hmm. you got the fruit carts, the taco carts, the ice cream carts. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. That's what I was thinking. All right, what's your pleasure, guys? Mr. Mayor, can these uh, two go together, or do you want to do them separately, Carl? Uh, we can do them together. Let's do them together. That's yep. I'm efficient. All right. All right. Be happy to make the uh, motion uh, first to adopt urgency ordinance number one four one five, adding a new section five point two eight point zero eight zero to the Belfort Municipal Code governing the impoundment of food, goods, merchandise that is abandoned or offered for sale or rent by persons who do not possess a valid permit issued by the city. Second uh, would be to introduce and waive first reading of, of ordinance number 1416, let, let's see, adding a new section 5.28.080 to the Belfort Municipal Code governing the, the impoundment of food, uh, goods, or merchandise that is abandoned or offered for sale or rent by persons who do not possess a valid permit 
issued by the city. Second. Motion on the floor by Councilmember Hamada and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Sunny Santanez. Call roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem Santanez? Aye. Councilmember Hamada? Aye. Councilmember Coops? Aye. Councilmember Sanchez? Aye. Mayor Dutton? Aye. Item 13A, Mr. Stewart. This is consideration of possible action to consider a six month extension for three cannabis business permits for dispensary cultivation and distribution uses by Joint Forces LLC to continue to operate at 10040 and 10042 Artesia Place. Uh, the representative is Jonathan Barrett, and uh, Travis Sace has a staff report for you. All right. Travis, let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, as Mr. Stewart mentioned, item 13A before you this evening is to consider a six-month extension for Joint Forces LLC doing business as Green Wolf. Um, there are three CBPs to continue to operate at 10040 and 10042 Artesia Place. So just a brief overview for you. At the December 9th, 2021 Special City Council meeting, the City Council considered CBP renewals for existing permittees. Following the review and discussion of Green Wolf CBPs, the City Council granted Green Wolf a renewal of its three CBPs for a six month period instead of the full 12 months due to pending completion of the cultivation space expansion and upgraded HVAC units that were to be installed as an odor mitigation measure. The existing CBPs are set to expire at the end of this month on June 30th. So the cultivation expansion consisted of adding three grow rooms, bringing the total square footage of the cultivation space from 6,300 square feet to 10,239 square feet. And the cultivation expansion also included revising the mechanical HVAC systems and electrical lighting systems for the new cultivation rooms. So the expansion has been completed and the permit was finaled on May 10th, 2022. And as an odor mitigation measure, the permittee installed three new mini split HVAC systems near the front of the cultivation building, which fronts Artesia Place at 10042 Artesia Place. And the permittee also installed a CLO2 odor and pathogen control unit as an additional odor mitigation measure. Now, the um, permittee originally stated at the December 9th Special City Council meeting it was going to replace all of the HVAC units throughout the building. However, the permittee informed staff that it discovered the CLO2 odor and pathogen control unit is actually more cost effect effective, um, and it's an odor solution that is supposed to better neutralize cannabis odors. So attachment B, which was provided by the applicant and is attached to the staff report, provides a technical description of the CLO2 odor and pathogen control. So this next slide has a few photos of the three-room uh, three cultivation expansion. So there is one of the rooms with um, some plants, some cannabis plants, and then um, the permittee did mention that it plans to um, be adding the uh, plants to the remainder of the rooms uh, very soon. So per the City Council's direction regarding Green Wolf's six-month renewal and fees at the December 9th Special City Council meeting, Green Wolf did pay half of the renewal fees required to activate its three CBPs in January of 2022. If the City Council grants the full annual renewal for Green Wolf's three CBPs, they would expire at the same time as all other annual permits, which is December 31st, 2022. If the City Council grants the renewal, Green Wolf will be required to pay the balance of all CBP renewal and activation fees, which totals $49,536. Therefore, the recommendation tonight is, if appropriate, grant Joint Forces LLC doing business as Green Wolf, three CBPs for dispensary cultivation and distribution uses until December 31st, 2022, or alternatively discuss and take other action related to this item. That completes the report. Staff and the permittee representative um, are here and available to answer any questions. Thank you. All right. Any questions to staff to start off? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Go um, ahead, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you. Um, uh, first off, I, I mean, just want to say uh, thank you for the work that the applicant has done to bring this to, um, to, to this point. I know this was one item that I asked we we do a six month you know renewal on. Um, it looks like uh, he's completed pretty much everything on the list, um, and I am pleased to say, and I think we would all concur, we have not had any other incidents at this time, right? 
So just to um, kind of touch on some of the uh, smell citations. So there were three smell citations issued to the permittee. Um, there was one issued on October 8th, 2021, and then December 7th, 2021, and then uh, April 12th, 2022. Um, there hasn't been any other issues. Um, Ms. Corpus, do you have anything else to add? Uh, nothing else to add. Thank you. Um, and those were prior to the completion of all the work that the applicant has completed in the site. Um, so I'm comfortable saying that, I'll speak for myself at this point, but I'm comfortable saying that the applicant has met the requirements at this point in time. And if there has been no further incidents, of course, we'll continue to monitor um, this site and others. But um, I just, I wanted to clarify that and just very um, pleased to see that all the items were, um, were handled and, and uh, dealt with. So just wanted to say that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Coops? I, no, I'm, I feel just like- Mr. Uh, Hamada? Yes, uh, I, I would concur with my colleagues uh, the, in regards to the comments <laughs> regarding the uh, number of uh, citations or violations. Uh, so it appears only one this year. So per, uh, per Travis's comment. That's correct. Yeah, um, so that, that seems acceptable. That, I mean, that's acceptable. Uh, I'm quite interested in the CLO2, uh, 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 the odor and pathogen control. I, I know it says the uh, look at permittee informed staff of this 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 new uh, technology and, and this science of of minimizing the odors. Uh, was there any third party confirmation that this system works and it it, it has it been is it now working and yeah, maybe that's. It was I'll recently it. installed, yeah, as the permittee yeah, stated. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, the permittee is here so, and um, may be able to speak a little bit more on that right. system if yeah, the council yeah. desires. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Travis. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem Santinez. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, since the permit was finalized on May 10th, uh, did staff conduct a, um, a substantive testing after May 10th? Staff has been out to inspect the smell, and um, it's my understanding that there hasn't been any odors detected from the location. Okay, very good. Thank you. And I have a question for the applicant. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Can we hear from the applicant? Come on up there, John. Okay. State your name for the record and... and uh, I'm uh, Jonathan Barrett. I am uh, the applicant for Joint Forces LLC. I am the 50% owner with my wife, Heather Alexander, and she is here to speak to. <laughs> so I know right. a lot of people wanted to know about the CLO2, something I'm very okay. excited about. I, I actually had found a greenhouse out in Greenfield that said there was a, uh, there was a company in Australia that specialized in odor mitigation. And so we ended up uh, getting in a conversation with them. And instead of doing what most people do, where they sp uh, spit a smell out on top of the odor, so they don't really, it doesn't really c cover up the smell. It more just has a sweet smell than the weed smell. This actually kind of can, once it touches the odor, it changes the molecular structure of it. And it basically dissipates the whole entire smell. And so I thought this was like something really, really cool. I do have two confirmed that uh, other companies that were in trouble like us with the city that, mm -hmm. you know, they had 50, 60,000 square <coughs> foot greenhouses and it was able to take care of them. So I really thought it was going to help with us. Uh, we ordered it probably in February and it took close to four months coming in. So the day that we got that complaint on April 18th was actually one of the few days that we had accidentally turned on one of the old ACs. As of right now, we replaced all the front ACs, but they're still sitting on the roof, actually able to be used because we didn't want to hire the crane yet to start taking all of them off so that we could do it all at one time. So I just wanted to say that before we, when we got that complaint, we had not yet gotten this hooked up, but... Even I'm impressed at how well this thing is working right now. Kind of one of those kicking yourself in the, for not finding it a few months earlier, but you know, it took us literally 
calling international overseas cannabis, you know, Colombia and some of these other people, what were they were doing? And we actually were able to find this new thing. And I think this is really going to solve all any issues going forward. I feel very comfortable with it. Did you say earlier that you, that you were at a greenhouse in Greenville? And uh, Greenfield. Yeah, <laughs> Greenfield. Where's that? Salinas. Uh, by Salinas. the Salinas Monterey. I was just curious. <laughs> so I was going to say most people didn't, but it was one of the very first cities to come on. So there's actually probably close to 400, almost 500,000 square feet of greenhouses. And so every greenhouse there has had this exact same issue, and they all we all started out with the more uh -huh. filters, okay, the scented sprays, okay, and actually two of them were actually able to install this and work, and the other ones basically changed their whole entire operations to greenhouses, uh, glass greenhouses instead of the normal cheap side ones, so that they, basically all the smell they basically turned them into almost indoor grows. Interesting. It's been an interesting endeavor for us, too, hasn't it, guys? Yeah, yeah. education, <laughs> me, for sure. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much, and thank you for your patience. And uh, I know that uh, you've been under the microscope, so to speak, here, uh, especially mm -hmm. in the last um, um, renewal application. Um, and thank you for your patience, and thank you for, um, because we believe in you. And uh, I, for one, I said before that in terms of location, you're the best location uh, it's, it, it's very, your operation is vertically integrated because you have it all. You're the only ones who's got all the, all the permits. Uh, so my question to you is, um, in the staff report, it says supposed to be better, it's supposed to better neutralize cannabis. I'm kind of concerned about the word supposed to. Have you proven that? Yes, it's that's what I was saying. I, I have uh, no issues. I would say in the next couple of days, I can get you literally confirmation from some of these cities that have had that issue and this been installed for those greenhouses and it, it literally been able to vent that those things were true. So this isn't like I just called a guy in and, and Australia and he was like, yeah, I can make it work. So I think we've got, there have been a couple of cases alone in uh, Greenfield and I think up in those uh, Monterey County areas that you know, was the reason we did it. You know, it wasn't cheap. It was almost $30,000. We had to order it in. I had to basically stay there from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. to talk to the guys over in Australia to make sure it was set up. I actually had a couple of guys here this morning just to make sure. I thought maybe somebody might come by. So I honestly had this whole presentation set up for everybody in case they showed up today, but mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately no one did, so. But they have staff members for the company that were willing to speak on its behalf to you More guys. than willing to speak, mm -hmm. doing okay, any kind good. of personal. Mm -hmm. So, so, any, so what any, kind of material do they use to kind of filter the odor? Well, it's basically, it's a combination of gases that are mixed and then it basically we put them underneath the ACs and on top of the AC. So basically every bit of air that's going into the AC is getting hit with that, so it's basically neutralizing it there, and then we went another step and we put it all the way around our building on top of the ACs. So basically, any of the smell that should be permeating any anything on my roof is basically being neutralized before it can so, even. So get there's off. no filter. No, no, it changes the compounds oh, and okay. like it's the molecules. So it's, 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 so it's so chemi chemical, chemical yeah, it's process. Chemical so gas okay. that's being circled around in the AC. So with the fan. So as the fans are activated, it out it automatically clicks on and it immediately starts dumping the ClO2 on it. So it's really a different technology. Then. It, it really yeah. is. Believe me, I've. Ask her, I've had countless times on the phone where I'm kind of just like, man, I, you know, I had my moments where I thought, oh, man, I just blew all this money. This is going to get us in trouble. Like, I don't know. And then, you know, I got on the roof myself and was like, you know, what little I might have been able to smell here and there. You know, you have bad days. Like, I think we've really nailed it on the head. I think this mm -hmm. is going forward. I'd be extremely, you know, surprised if we have any issues going forward with this mm -hmm. new thing. And how large is the unit? Uh, probably four foot by five foot. It runs 24 seven, but it makes its own. So oh, okay. we have, it has three or four chemicals that it all comes together, makes it, and then it goes up and it off gases into those cells. So it's a 24 hour thing that doesn't have to be run by me or with a timer. It just runs 24 seven. As long as you make sure that the chemicals are in there with big giant gugs that only need to be replaced once a month. Uh, mm. I'd love to show everybody if anybody ever wants to come by to, I think it's a really cool new technology, you know, of 
since legalization, you know, every year there are new things coming out that people have been working on. Even me, who's been in this 15 years, the last three years, things have been moving at such a high pace. It's almost incredible how things are getting outdated and pretty much filters are starting are now starting to be outdated because they're not as efficient as you thought. It used to be as simple as find the cubic feet, do the math. OK, these uh, filters do this. OK, well, you need eight of them. That's simple. Well, I did that. And then I doubled it, and then I tripled it. Still not so good. Still when, not good you know, and then we still got the complaint in December, mm -hmm. and then it kind of was like, even for me, like, wow, I got to really think outside the box, and luckily we had one more option. Okay, very good. Good for you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if I may, we also have some photos, too, of, those, of the unit, actually, um, that the applicant was able to provide. So... Um, Jonathan, um, if you want to explain yeah, what's going the, on the here. Yeah, the picture on the left side is the actual uh, CL2 thing. As you see, you see the three jugs down on the bottom where it mixes it mm -hmm. and it comes up. And then basically we have it going up into our roof and it goes all the way two or three blowers in every single AC fan right there. And then we also have some underneath that are going into the return. Trying to hit it front top. I'd come from the sides if I could, but I can't. <laughs> so you got it covered. You know, any opening I see, I'm sticking something in there. Mr. Sanchez, you had something. I uh, like thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to say again, I think I want to echo uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Sonny Sanchez's uh, comments. Uh, in December, I asked those tough questions, or I asked those questions of you guys, and I put that on you, uh, or we did, mainly because you know we want no negative externality to the community. We understand this is a partnership. Um, you're, you're, you're meeting all our goals. So again, just thank you for, for, for doing that and for taking the initiative to find a, a more creative solution. Um, I so just want to thank it. you on that. All right. I'm only four years into 20 year lease and Jerry would have made me pay all 16 <laughs> of those years had you not approved That's it. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Just wanted to say that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, oh, go ahead. Hey, hold on. Right, yeah, I'm right. Yes, Jonathan. Oh, look at Heather. Again, good evening. Thank you for being here. Uh, Again, thank you for you know complying with the requirements and and making every effort to to you know take care of the business and uh, you know take care of the community from an environmental standpoint and and um, and you got to love science. Oh yeah, know, yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, uh, are there any since chlorine dioxide is is that a is there a is I know it's injected in right? Mm -hmm. Is there a byproduct that comes out? Is there a uh, no, percentage? that is the smell. It basically coats on, and it, it just it's it's almost like a yeah. like a Febreze type, where it's yeah. like once it attaches on the molecule, it immediately right. changes okay. it, and it just All dissipates right. so out. You know, uh, out. obviously, we have any uh, alarms or anything. Actually, it meets the AQMD standards and, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a little little experience, uh, again from my days in Arundale to to see these companies or, or smell these companies that produce dog food and cat food, and they. They used to use the old standard of injecting uh -huh. a scent, mm -hmm. right. and you would smell bubble gum more than dog food, but then you might smell both of them at the same time, and then it really was a, an odd odor. But all right, so this is so yeah, the the technology is advanced, and mm -hmm. so I'm glad you were able to find this and and uh, and utilize it. Uh, it 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 seems impressive, and um, uh, so when you Someone was to stand by it as it puts out, so there's nothing you no, you no, feel. No, it, it's one of those. Uh, so. You it would have to be blasted in a room for mm -hmm. thirty days, and you in that room for anything to happen. It's not. It's mm -hmm. not as bad as uh, or as violent as CO two, which we run in there. So oh, we have alarms yeah. for all of it. Yeah. It has a sensor. If the, the left part, that little box with the red thing, it actually is run by a hole. It has a computer system in it. So they, 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 I have a guy that monitors it 24-7. If something happens with that, the company is able to uh, pull up the data and make any adjustments on that or anything we see or anything that may have adjustments. So that thing is attached to multiple apps, alarms, anything. Oh, okay. So if right. we should have that, any, that nice yeah, any issues like that, we have an exhaust All in right. that room it, to begin with anyway. Mm -hmm. So if... Uh, we were definitely yeah. worried about, you know, and that's that's code that you need to have yeah, all that there. So. Yeah, one of the attachments, you know, uh, showed a comparison between, um, like, ozone as the top corrosive 
component versus, you know, chlorine dioxide, which mm -hmm. is down at the bottom there, 0.95. So less than half, uh, half of what, you know, ozone puts out and, uh, you know, better than bleach, better than um, hookah hydrogen peroxide and, mm -hmm. and so on. So, all right, well, uh, uh, hopefully it continues to work. You know, let me see. You're going to be keeping an eye on it. I, I, I'll be there, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sure, okay. the, the code enforcement has my number and right, others' numbers. Yeah, we will, do. Uh, <laughs> more than like to call if we All have right. any. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank, thank you, you council members. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to grant Joint Forces LLC, DBA Green Wolf, the three CBPs for the dispensary cultivation and distribution uses until December 31st, 22. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Oh. Motion on the floor by myself and the second by Mayor Pro Tem Sunny Santinez. Call roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem Santinez? Aye. Councilmember Hamada? Aye. Councilmember Coops? Aye. Councilmember Sanchez? Aye. Mayor Dutton? Aye. Item 13B. Mr. Stewart. Yeah, this is a consideration of possible action to adopt resolution number 22-30, a resolution approving substantial amendment to the fiscal year 2021 annual block grant annual action plan to reprogram the remaining community development block grant coronavirus relief funds and authorize the city manager to execute CDBG-CV, subrecipient agreements, and a form approved by the city attorney between the city of Bellflower and qualified community services providers for youth, family, and senior citizen services. And Mr. Lizarraga is making the presentation to the city council. Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, again, as mentioned uh, at the yeah. one of the prior items, I'm going to have to recuse myself. Again, based on the uh, principle of uh, of uh, that I'm a member of certain boards <laughs> of directors, and uh, so gotcha. I'm. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm a board member for Kingdom Causes. I'm also the uh, board chair for the YMCA Los Cerritos branch, and. Uh, now the uh, current president-elect of the Community Family Guidance Center. So I'm going to recuse myself. All right, Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I also have to recuse myself from this item as I am uh, an employee of Community Family Guidance Center that provides children's mental health in the region. So let the record reflect that Councilmember Hamada and Councilmember Sanchez are recusing themselves. All right, take it away. Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council, tonight staff is seeking the City Council's direction on the reprogramming of remaining community development block grant coronavirus funds, also known as CDBG-CV. As a quick overview, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, also known as the CARES Act, made funding available for local governments to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Under the CARES Act, the city received a total of about $1.19 million from HUD. HUD also established a six-year expenditure deadline for these funds, which is June 30th, 2026. And to provide recommendations as to the programming of these funds, an ad hoc subcommittee of city council members was formed at the May 24th, 2021 city council meeting. And based on the subcommittee's recommendations, the City Council decided to allocate these funds towards an array of programs that address community needs brought on by the pandemic. These programs are listed here and in your agenda packet as part of the substantial amendment. In particular, the City Council allocated a portion of these funds for community services programs that would be targeted towards Bellflower youth, families, and senior citizens senior citizens who have been impacted by COVID-19 and have low and moderate income. Following this direction, the city issued a notice of funding availability or NOFA for short on September 16th of last year. By the end of the NOFA deadline, staff received only four applications from community nonprofits. Then at the city council meeting on January 15th of this year, the city council directed staff to extend the NOFA deadline and reach out to more potential nonprofit providers. By February 22nd, 2022, staff received a total of 14 applications from nonprofit service providers. A list of the applicant community services providers is included in your agenda packet. 
Applicants were asked to provide a scope of work, project goals, budgets, and other details. The total funding requests from all applicants adds up to almost $454,000, which is more than the original allocated amount of only $150,000 for these programs. So to help us decide how to assign funds among the applicants, an ad hoc, ad hoc subcommittee of city council members met to discuss the applications. And the subcommittee's recommendation was to determine what funds would be remaining and available from other TDBGCV programs and reallocate these funds towards community services so that all applicants could be considered for funding. Now that we're almost done processing all applicants for both the Emergency Residential Relief Program and the Food and Security Program, we estimate that $284,000 and $43,000 respectively will be remaining from those programs. Furthermore, an additional $30,000 from the Small Business Startup Program will now be funded through regular CDBG funds, as uh, Jim Delalonja mentioned, mentioned earlier which frees up funding that can also be reallocated. Therefore, a total of $357,000 is available for reallocation. By adding this amount to the originally allocated $150,000, we get a total a proposed reallocated amount of $507,000, more than enough to fund all nonprofit applicants. Since the total requested funds is only about $454,000, staff will divide the difference of approximately $53,000 equally among all applicants and request that applicants provide updated budgets in order to receive the increased amounts. If the City Council approves the draft substantial amendment by adopting resolution number 2230, staff will work closely with applicant community service providers to verify estimated expenditures, program obje objectives, and the number of clients served. Staff will also make sure that applicants have adequate systems in place to ensure compliance with all federal requirements and ensure that they're only serving Bellflower residents. With that, staff recommends for the City Council to adopt resolution number 2230 or alternatively discuss and take another action related to this item. That completes my presentation, and staff is available for any questions. Thank you. That's a report. Is this how I remembered it? <laughs> and uh, when you mentioned there was an ad hoc committee, it was myself and Dan on that ad hoc committee, for the record. Huh? You and me. Oh, you and me, yeah. You you, yeah. Me I don't already. remember the meeting. I guess yeah. I don't remember <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Neither is somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing how long it takes for it to come out. How long ago does we meet? May 14th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, any questions of staff? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was following into yeah. your presentation. I think uh, you lost me on the last part. Uh, so the total request was $454,000? Is that right? It, yeah, if, if you add, add all the applicants, what they requested, it adds up to about that and then much. The funding available, uh, including the reallocation, is $507,000, right? So there's an excess of 54000 That's right. So what's going to happen to that 54000 That's where I got lost. So uh, what we anticipate is that that will serve as a sort of cushion because some of the applicants submitted requests back way back in October. And so... We, when we we'll work closely with the applicants and if they have ex estimated expenditures that have increased since then, which we anticipate that may be the case, then we would ask for an updated budget and you know, verify if whether or not the, the fund, the requested fund funding amount may have to change slightly. It, it's basically, a, we anticipate that, that that would be a cushion that would perhaps be needed uh, another thing would be that uh, we can also divide that equally amongst all the applicants and 
provide that additional money for no, each I, of these. I would recommend no, you I hold would, that in advance would, and then it. go through your go through the mid year budget, yeah. go through the mid year estimates, what it's going to be, and if you look like there's going to be a difference, bring it back to the council and the council provide direction yeah. how to distribute the additional fifty four thousand dollars. I think the way we should do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was kind of questioning because I I, I don't yeah. just want to give the money to them, yeah. you know, because the point here is they asked for four hundred fifty four thousand dollars already. Yes. And we're giving everything to them. Yes. And so I'm not in favor of giving additional money that they haven't asked in the first place. Mm. Okay. Yes. So why would we do I that? I think the, the best way to do is have the council evaluate the request if they do come in with additional overages or something. And we can do it through mid-year as we start tracking how they do, I think. Uh, okay. That makes sense, yeah. All right. No, I'm, I'm, I'm on track now. All right. And the, the other question I have for you is um, um, how do we administer the funding? Is it going to be based on reimbursement or are we going to advance the money to them? What's the process? It's, it's based on a cost reimbursement basis, so they have to submit all the appropriate CDBG-CV documentation and uh, invoices for costs incurred. Okay, yes. that's very good. I, I like that because, uh, so basically they're on the hook. They are. Okay, well, because I, I've managed CDBG funds and it is not fun. It, I can yeah. tell you that. So, <laughs> so we want to make sure that uh, it's sub it can be subjected to a, uh, a good audit Mm -hmm. So I like the reimbursement concept. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. <laughs> because of that. I was wondering where the two is like, hey, what we talked about. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to keep asking. We I need know. more. Well, they have to be, you know, and if some of those nonprofits don't perform or underperform, they're not going to get all the money. We may have more after money left over, you know, and then trying to reprogram that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Mr. Mayor, can I, can I ask for one more yes, question? Yes, sure. Uh, that's related to this. I'm, the food insecurity, so we have extra money for that? Yeah. Yeah, we had, we, we did, we're undersubscribed for both the food insecurities and the rental assistance program, and that's where we got a lot of the extra funds to fund this program. I, I, just, I just can't believe that. People are hungry, <laughs> and here we are. We have money. Oh, it just doesn't make sense to me. But it is what it is. Thank you. Yeah. Dan, do you have any questions? No, I think okay. you guys got it figured out here, even though I didn't well, come to the meeting. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another guy. <laughs> no, I think it's fair. Yeah. Um, I'm glad to hear that we have, we're able to fulfill the request, and we'll see whether or not they manifest themselves. Well, okay, I'll make a motion to adopt Resolution 22-30 then. Second motion. Call roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Councilmember Coops? Aye. Mayor Dutton? Aye. Somebody want to go get their colleagues? That's the way it's supposed to go. Okay, guys, we're down to the consent calendar, item 14. Any recusals or conflicts? And my cheat sheet says we nobody has conflicts. No. Nope. Yes. That's the first. Yeah. Can I move the consent calendar? Uh, since? Mr. Mike, can, like, yeah. can I pull item 14K for just for a question and comment? Okay. 14K. 14K. Anybody else want to pull an item for further discussion? That'd be it. Uh, who's what's for, who's in charge of 14K? Mr. Uh, Delalonga. De there he is. Okay, he's already <laughs> up here. Okay. He's ready to go. <laughs> he's ready. Oh, I'm gonna get to see what that item was. I should have not left my seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead. We'll, we'll hear. Before oh, we I, I'm, I'm here to field the comment or yeah. the question. All right. Uh, Somebody, go ahead. My comment first is that uh, to our viewing public, this, uh, this, um, this item is regarding the, uh, the naming of the, um, uh, the wireless network to be provided by the city. So the staff's proposal is to call it Bellflower Connect uh, dash powered by the city of Bellflower. And I just want to commend you with the name. It's really, it's a powerful name because um, in addition to 
um, getting the promotion out there. I, I think it sends a very clear message that the city is behind it. The city is basically uh, funding it to a different source, so to speak. So it, it, is, it, it makes a very powerful statement uh, as far as I'm concerned. But my question here is, uh, how are we in terms of implementing this wireless network? Well, we have Keith Alexis from ICCN here in the audience that can come out and, and help answer that question for us. So he's going to oh, come really? up to the podium. Yeah, we oh, were okay. able to get wow. him here uh, to do this. And um, we haven't seen him or talked to him since uh, the workshop that we had via Zoom a long time ago. So he's going to come up. Well, I'm, I'm glad I asked, asked the, the question. Qu yes. He's all dressed up and sitting back there. And we yes, didn't tell we him it was casual. Oh, okay. <laughs> So my question is, where are we in terms of Im implementation? Absolutely, uh, no. Thank you very much, and good evening, Mayor and Councilmen, members. Uh, so from a, a deployment standpoint, um, we have had, had our difficulties because of the supply chain, global supply chain problems that, that are going on. Uh, we're very fortunate, however, to actually continue to move the ball forward. Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, the project is based on four different phases. Uh, phase one, phase two is more a little bit more south, and then phase three and four a little bit more north of the, you know, the 91. Uh, what we're going to do in phase one is go through with the central network. That process will start September, middle of September. Uh, that's when we expect to get most of the physical units in uh, the city. Uh, we'll be able to start doing the tests, uh, have our tests up and running by the end of that month, and by the first uh, week of October, we'll be able to start giving out the individual units for some of the residents. We'll also have uh, something that we haven't really mentioned that much, um, deployed roughly about 20 or 30 hotspots around the city as well. So whether or not that may very well be parks, that may be public areas, along Bellflower Boulevard with the restaurants and so forth. So there will be a combination of public wireless as well as the private residential wireless in that first phase. The second phase will start roughly the latter part of the year, uh, November, December time frame, with planning, uh, making sure we do all of the proper tests because we are we're, we're, um, uh, expected to live up to a certain standard of performance. Uh, and we will be providing initially weekly and then bi-monthly reporting on that performance by every single resident as well as by the, the, the public area network as well. So um, we're expecting the second phase to start in that October, November, November, mm -hmm. December time frame. Mm -hmm. Same process. Uh, it goes in the first week of November. It takes us about 14 days to build. And then by the end of the month, we'll be able to start releasing that second uh, phase two. That's the southern part of the city as well. In, in phase one, are you going to be doing some kind of a pilot test? As oh, kind, absolutely. As, as kind of a subset of that? Absolutely correct. Absolutely okay. correct. So, so which area are you kind of planning on doing that? So I don't have the map up available, but in phase one uh, along Bellflower, Bellflower Boulevard, uh, we'll do the public area tests along where some of the, the, um, the restaurants are. So that'll sort of be our initial footprint. And then several blocks outside of Bellflower Boulevard is where we'll be able to physically cover. These units, just to give you a, a reference point, these units from a wireless perspective will cover roughly up to about half of a mile. So we'll have quite Radius. a bit. Yes, radius. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is, is that we're, we're leveraging a technology you may or may not have heard of. It's uh, called CBRS that the FCC has allowed to be public. But the whole system, after the next year or two, is upgradable to full 5G network as well. Mm -hmm. so, so we're not putting in something that sort of goes legacy after three or four years. This is sort of future, future proofed as well. Oh, that's powerful because yeah. if you think about it, Bellflower generally speaking, is two miles wide and three miles long, so to speak, so six, <laughs> six square miles. That's right. what it is. Absolutely correct. Absolutely wow. correct. Okay. So, so the size of the city really helps us. Now, mm -hmm. the density, the amount of people that we're targeting to actually cover within the city is where we'll, we'll need help um, uh, as we work with Jim's team on deciding where to put units um, and, and where to physically cover. But we're expecting that when we're done, will have a decent portion of the residents covered, but then in the general city, we're expecting to probably cover about 30 to 40, maybe even 50% of the city as oh, well. Okay, great. All right, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any thank questions? you. Thanks for waiting on us.
<laughs> oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Not a problem at all. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. The last item, right. the Thank last you. thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it wasn't very entertaining. Though. No. <laughs> <laughs> About the driest meeting we've had in a no, while. No, he's the best dressed guy in the house. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I so I made a motion yeah. for the consent calendar. Okay. Anybody want to make a second? Second. Got a motion on the floor by Coops and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Sonny Santa Inez. And without objection, that'll be the order. The final stretch. Council reports. Uh, Mr. Santa Inez. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of comments. Um, I, I saw the, uh, the on the way to City Hall this, this afternoon, I saw the farmer's market. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of vendors, lots of vendors. So that's good. That's really good. So it's better than um, what we expected, I think. So far, so good. Uh, and also, just to um, alert our residents, it's, um, the weather is getting warmer, so the, the mosquitoes are getting more active. So please... Um, Take a look at your backyard and clean up, uh, clean up any, uh, any standing water because that's where mosquito thrives. All right, and then also, um, I'd like to request that the city council meeting tonight be adjourned in memory of Michael Edward Michalowski. Uh, let me read this by you here. Uh, Michael Edward Michalowski was born in Ashland, Wisconsin on July 22, 1949 and passed away on May 26, 2022. Mike joined the, Marine, the Merchant Marines when old enough and sailed on ships in the Great Lakes. He eventually became a welder and worked for Barco Hydraulics in Superior, Wisconsin. He later moved to California in, 19, in the 1970s and met Patricia Robbins on June 5, 1980. They became engaged six weeks later on February 28, 1980 and married at the Chapel Wedding Bells on May 2, 1980. Mike worked as a welder in the shipyard in Long Beach until he had changed occupations after injuring his knee and having four surgeries on it. He went back to school two years later and then became an electronic technician. He then went to work for Dunn and Bradstreet, the Nielsen TV ratings. During the past 10 years, Mike was very active in his church, the St. Bernard's Catholic Church, ministries including the pantry, various church projects, and festival preparation. He was head of the Eucharistic ministry and brought you could, the Eucharist to the sick. Mike had a beautiful heart and was so full, full of love. He survived by his, by his wife for 40 years, 42 years, Patricia, his brother Patrick, his sisters Deborah Jean and Jean Carroll, and Sharon Ray, and his stepson David, stepdaughter Shelley, two grandchildren, and three great grandchildren. Uh, Mike will be, uh, the memorial service for Mike will be on Thursday, on Wednesday. Uh, the White's funeral and his um, uh, funeral will be on Thursday morning. There'll be a mass at St. Bernard Church. Our deepest sympathies and heartfelt condolences go out to the entire Michalowski family. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, let's see, uh, last month, Councilman Coops, Sanchez, and I um, uh, went to the Women's Club 100. Uh, Second anniversary celebration. So, uh, uh, you know, congratulations to the women's club, and uh, 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 they had a great showing and uh, a great event. And uh, uh, we uh, again wish them well on uh, the future. Um, um, on the 31st, I was able to attend the chamber again morning mix uh, mingle again. Um, it's, uh, it's a packed house, so standing room only, and uh, so it's. Uh, Definitely well attended. Uh, there's a lot of great networking and uh, you know, updates. I want to thank staff again. Uh, Jim and Joel are always there to help help uh, uh, pass on the word for us. You know, I'd like to just turn it over to them because they're you know uh, uh, they're uh, you know doing a day in day out. So um, uh, look forward to uh, again uh, look at this month's mingle. Um, on the first, I attended an online meeting um, with the assistant city manager and uh, we call it the public works director, um, uh, we got Len Gorecki. We met with uh, uh, Caltrans District 7, uh, their maintenance uh, uh, people. And uh, uh, apparently, some time ago, I complained to Caltrans 
uh, and uh, they responded. Uh, so uh, they we had this session with them, and we had a good discussion and uh, had uh, some dialogue with their uh, maintenance people in this area. Uh, you know, come to find out, um, Bellflower is split between two districts, so maintenance uh, uh, sometimes uh, is not coordinated as well. But uh, we did remind them that uh, they must take care of their business, uh, and uh, looks like we're getting some um, some response. I know that Len uh, met uh, with the uh, uh, with the superintendent uh, very recently to address some of the right away and, and uh, we've also talked about possibly some new fencing that would be more secure than the uh, typical chain link so uh, it, it was it was a good meeting uh, I'm glad I complained I, I didn't it was a uh, there was a survey uh, it, it was online uh, by email I believe and and I just happened to just you know again lay out some comments and so it finally came back so I again wanted to uh, thank Caltrans for responding, and, and again, thank Len again for uh, being there to, uh, so that uh, uh, we can uh, definitely point out uh, the issues. Um, this month, uh, SCAG again, um, um, I'm going to attend the uh, Transportation Committee uh, and the Regional Council. Um, probably the, uh, the prominent uh, discussion at uh, the regional council was the state audit on RENA. Uh, the, uh, the regional housing uh, again needs assessment, uh, and um, they did some reviews of some of the regions, not the uh, not the Skag region. They did them some of the up north ones, and some of the smaller ones. And they found out that there was some calculation errors in RENA. At least that's the way they they they've. they've um, Again, reported it, and uh, so uh, where it's going to uh, move on to. Uh, I know there was some comments from the SCAG people that, uh, uh, at least some of the regional council members, that uh, uh, they would uh, they would want to see one for the SCAG region, but uh, uh, we're not sure how soon that would be. But uh, um, they did come. They mentioned about potential errors and. Um, 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 Calculation errors and, and um, um, you know methodology issues. So uh, we'll see. It it did. Pr that was probably the the one item that uh, stirred the most discussion. Of course, you know, arena and and how we need to comply with uh, uh, the uh, state requirement on the number of housing. And, and again, for Bellflower, it's going to be over three thousand uh, two hundred uh, uh, within the uh, next eight years. So uh, that was uh, my couple weeks. So again, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to elaborate a little bit on the meeting that uh, was held commemorating the 100th birthday of the Women's Club of Bellflower, which is a big deal. Oldest continuous history club in our city. I always thought Rotary Club, which started in 1926, was the oldest, but they predate them by four years. And they put on a wonderful evening of history of the club and uh, how they started out. Uh, our, what, one of the first preschools during the World War II, they used that entire building as a place where you could drop your child off while you went and worked at the war plants. And uh, there's no charge, just bring your child, we'll take care of them through the day. So uh, that, that club has paid, played an important part in the history of Bellflower and made it better. And uh, Councilman Hamad and Mr. Sanchez and myself were there, and uh, it was a well-attended meeting. As we get into the summer months, I want to emphasize the fact that uh, school's out and that the kids in the street and their bicycles are always a challenge we need to be aware of. You know, the ones that are always the hardest to track are the skateboards. You never know which way they're going to go, left or right. But uh, just figure they're coming. You know, I always learned about what defensive driving was, driving like everybody else is crazy. And basically, that's what you got to do when you have kids in the street riding bikes just to figure that they don't see you and that you need to take the initiative to keep away from them. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Coops. Councilmember Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just quickly, I um, want to highlight the, uh, my attendance at a um, uh, at Wells conference uh, for the Southern California Region um, Water uh, Conference, and it was just informative. Uh, I was able to take a tour of the uh, um, 
WRD's uh, Replenishment Albert Robles Center for Waste Recycling and Environmental Learning uh, in Pico. It was very informative. It was my first time uh, really being attending that event or that venue and just I um, uh, just wanted to highlight that. Um, and then I was on vacation, so I don't have anything else really to report. So okay. that concludes my comments. With that said, uh, call for adjournment in memory of Michael Edward Mitchell-Lewiski to the next regular meeting of Bellflower City Council at 5.30 p.m. Monday, June 27, 2022.